Welcome to this week's edition of Outdoors Online, a weekly webcast produced by the North Dakota Game and Fish Department. I'm your host, Tom Jensen. You could be getting a letter from Game and Fish Department very soon, and it's important that you fill out the contents and send them back. My guest this week is Stephanie Tucker. Steph is the section leader in charge of surveys. Um, this, I guess, is the time of year, right after deer season, is when we really crank up the machine and, and start sending out the, the Right. Right, we send out harvest surveys throughout the year as hunting seasons and trapping seasons close for all of the game species pretty much in, in North Dakota. And so this time of year, you know, as soon as the deer season wraps up, those surveys go out in the mail and we ask hunters to let us know what kind of success they had and how much effort they put into hunting each year. What types of surveys are you doing now besides deer? Deer is the big one right now and other big game surveys, you know, muzzleloader will come up quick after muzzleloader season ends. Um, the early geese, goose seasons and things like that. So we have some waterfall season surveys that are coming up. Um, and then as the rest of the big game and upland game seasons close, those surveys get sent out as well. So elk, moose, um, oh, sure. pheasant, things like that. So just as seasons close, they get sent out. This is kind of a year long thing too. I mean, after your initial, right after hunting season stuff, even during the winter, next spring, you have all kinds of stuff. Right, right. For example, some of our fur bearer seasons close the latest. So those get sent out in early spring or early to late spring. So, mm -hmm. you know, for example, you know, our beaver and muskrat seasons close only at the beginning of May. So those get sent out pretty late compared to some of the other seasons. What kind of questions do you ask on these surveys? Right, primarily we wanna know, you know, what kind of, uh, effort the hunters or trappers are putting into it. So how many days are they spending in the field? Were they successful? And if they were successful, what kind of animals did they harvest? And that gives us an idea of effort trends. And those are some of our longest term data sets. You know, as the game section here at the Game and Fish Department, we're responsible for using the best available science to keep track of these populations. And these harvest surveys are really important to that. They're a really intricate piece of the puzzle uh, to keep track of the populations and hunter effort and density of harvest tells us a lot about the populations on the landscape and whether they're going up and down and how we might adjust our tags accordingly next year. Often you hear hunters say, gee, you know, I'll do anything I can to help game and fish with their efforts and things like that. This is a way that they can do it. You need to fill them out and send them back in. Absolutely, absolutely. This is, this is what game management is all based on. Data we collect from the hunters, you know, and we want to use as much data as possible. And we only send the surveys out to the bare minimum we need to get the answers we need. So that's all figured in there. You know, we don't want to pester people more than necessary, um, especially people who hunt a lot of different types of game animals. You know, they might get multiple surveys in one season and they're randomly selected and get those surveys. But we're really trying to send out the minimum number of surveys we have to to get the get the reasonable estimates of harvest that we need to manage uh, the population. How do you determine who you send them out to? It's a random sample, so we'll select random samples from say, for example, for deer hunters, we'd send 150 random samples from our gratis holders, our deer gun holders from each unit, um, from our bow hunters, things like that. So everything's calculated based on statistics and our probability of having the best available estimates with the lowest sample size possible. If somebody wanted to volunteer, can they? No, it doesn't quite work like that. We really want it to be random. And so we'll just send them out and the best thing they can do is just, if they see one or know somebody who's got one, just, you know, ask them to fill it out. Usually it only takes a few minutes to send them out, you know, to fill them out and then drop them in the mail. They all come with postage prepaid re return mailers. Mm -hmm. So drop them in that, send it back to us and, and that's the way we get the information. What do you use the information for, Steph? I know you're, you said that your questions are, are very pointed and things and, and you have right. a, a method that you use this information right. for. Uh, the primary purpose for the surveys is to determine hunter trends. So are, is our harvest going up or down? So that just alone by itself tells us a lot about the populations in some areas. And other things we can dive in a little bit more deeply, say maybe hunter density, the density of where they harvested. So if you have a bunch of units where have really high density and maybe there's a unit in the middle of there that has a really low harvest density, you want to try and figure out what's going on. So sometimes it'll set off little red flags for us to try and figure out what's going on with the population in a certain area. And in some cases, you know, we might compare it to other trends or other research we have uh, to see, you know, say for fur bearers, for example, if the population is going down, but our fur prices are going up, 
you know, that might raise some red flags for us and then we can adjust things accordingly with our seasons. So this basically just helps us better manage the resource. Right, and another good example would be our deer harvest. You know, we like to make sure that our deer hunters have a relatively decent chance of success in the field. And so the percentage of overall hunter success is a, is a thing that we consider every year when we set our tag numbers. And so we really wanna try and maintain a reasonable as, you know, a reasonable level of hunter success. We don't want people, go, you know, going out and getting a deer tag and, and wasting their time if it's very unlikely they're going to harvest a deer. And so um, that, that gets factored in very directly for our deer tags we issue. All right, Steph, thanks. You're welcome. There are eight advisory board districts spread out across the state, and a meeting will be held in each district. Here are the dates, times, and places for each advisory board meeting. If you have something on your mind you want to talk to Game and Fish representatives about, attend a meeting near you and speak up. For Stephanie Tucker and the rest of the staff here at North Dakota Game and Fish, thanks for joining us for Outdoors Online. We'll see you again next week.